All right. Uh, hello, everyone. This is the um, code organization subproject under um, ZIG architecture. Um, and today is March 19th, 2020. Um, if folks can add their names to the agenda, that'd be great. Um, and yeah, let's just get straight to it. Wait, am I recording? I am recording. Okay. Um, so I added two PRs that, um, that need review. Um, they are largely uh, for um, the work that SIG Cloud Provider is doing to uh, move the Cloud Controller Manager binary to uh, staging. Um, I think this one, the first one, is the, probably going to be the most contentious one. Um, this PR wants to move the generic cloud, uh, the generic controller manager configuration, and the Keep Cloud shared configuration to component base. Um, so I created a controller manager package in component base, and then um, both the Cube controller manager in core and the to be staged cloud controller manager can uh, import it there. Um, do folks have opinions on where those types should live? I had thought that the idea behind the push to, to config files for executables was that component base was going to hold things common to everything or, or common to at least you know, some significant subset. Uh, and then the specific repos for the binaries would hold the detailed config. That was my understanding too. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, the, the controller manager thing, it, if we didn't have cloud controller manager and cube controller manager, uh, then there'd be, these would really naturally live just inside cube controller manager, I guess. Um, it, it seems like there's a common set of things that both of those are using and will continue to use until the cloud controller loops are fully split out. Until that point, would it make sense for Cube Controller Manager to reference, like, like to move those configuration structs to their eventual final home under the Cloud Controller Manager, and for Cube Controller Manager to reference those there, I, rather than promoting them up to what it, I agree with David was supposed to be sort of a uh, application neutral shared library. So I think that would work for this one, because mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is specifically for the cloud controllers. Um, but for this one, I'm not sure that'll work. Um, I mean, that that's very small. Duplicating that between the two doesn't seem that burdensome to me. Yeah, OK. I can update the PR to duplicate it. Works for me. I mean, it looks like the, the things that are nested under there, like the client configuration and the debugging configuration leader election, those are already up in the common uh, config mm -hmm. package. So then it's really just address and list of controllers. So. Okay, so move the cloud shared one to the cloud controller manager and have key controller manager reference that and then just duplicate this across the two. And so, That's good to you, yeah. David. Uh, just trying to think about which order I would do that in, whether it would be in cube control. Yeah, I guess I'd put it in its final home and reference it from the foreign one. So yeah, that sounds good. Awesome, thanks. And then the second PR is a, um, should be a quick one, just moving the kubelet annotation to the cloud provider package. Uh, yeah, that's on my list to review. Um, I'm trying to get to stuff now that 118 is pretty much closed out. Sweet, thanks. That's it for the needs review section, unless there are other PRs folks want to bring up. All right, James, you want to talk about Docker Docker? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, just, just before we do, uh, Theodore, uh, was, was there something that you wanted to bring up? Or welcome to this meeting um no i don't want to bring up anything i just want to get more involved in the kubernetes community as i've been okay. using it quite a while and i thought that the sig meetings would be a nice way to understand how 
Kubernetes functions as a whole and how it's being organized. Uh, sounds good. So uh, just to give you a little bit of a background, um, so there are different SIGs in uh, Kubernetes, right? So the, one of the ones that we work under is called the SIG architecture. And SIG architecture has a few sub-projects, and this one is the code organization sub-project. So in code organization, we talk a lot about maintenance, uh, moving things around, uh, refactoring things, uh, you know, just to, uh, because we've accumulated uh, things over time uh, in different places. Uh, and there is a lot, several long-term initiatives, uh, you know, involved uh, in this sub project. So uh, if you don't understand something, just feel free to ask us as well. Okay. Uh, thank you for the okay. quick order. You're welcome. Okay. Um, so Docker, Docker. So uh, let me go backwards. So the way it started was uh, me and uh, Matt McNaughton, uh, we, we were talking last, uh, you know, couple of months ago and Matt was uh, expressed interest in helping with the taking Docker shim out of uh, out of Kubelet. So we he wanted to do uh, he he has been uh, involved in reviewing a bunch of things and he wanted to do a little bit more in Signal. So I I between the two of us we thought that this would be like a good uh, long term uh, work that he could take on. Uh, so. And the first thing that we did was, okay, we have provider less tags uh, for the extracting the cloud cloud stuff. So can we have a, a Docker less tag similar to that? So uh, this got us down a path of what, when we add Docker less tag, what are the things that are in Kubernetes Kubernetes, which still reference Docker Docker? Uh, that so we went down that experimental path, and we realized that uh, the SIG networking uses IPvS. Uh, that was one major thing. Then the CLI uses uh, 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 the package term PERM uh, for terminal functions. That was another one. And there was a few other references, uh, especially from Windows uh, code uh, about uh, sysinfo, um, which got uh, which drew in a bunch of packages. So, uh, so what, and then we also went through this exercise of uh, what does it, can we do the same tag in C Advisor as well? Uh, is, is C Advisor in a position to be able to, uh, you know, build, be built without uh, Docker Docker? Uh, so, so we went through both the repositories, we ripped out Docker, and we, we basically saw what we ended up with. Um, and then we said, okay, there's a bunch of things that we need to do outside. Uh, so we went to the mob, uh, Docker community. Uh, we got them to uh, externalize uh, IPVS in a new uh, repository, Mobi slash IPVS. Uh, and we got them to extract uh, term into Mobi slash term. Um, Actually, the, yeah, uh, the IPVS came from lib, Docker lib network. Um, so uh, I was wrong in saying it was Docker Docker. So, and then. Uh, but so, I think it had a transient dependency back yeah. to Docker Docker. So. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, so, so we did a lot of background work behind the scenes before we brought uh, some of these uh, here. So the JSON log is probably the easiest one. Uh, we just have to take a data structure out. So we didn't bother extracting any code from Docker Docker. We, we just pulled out the data structure uh, with a few fields. Um, so that was uh, really easy. Then the runtime CPU uh, was uh, a little bit more confusing in the sense that we had to first figure out why we were using num CPU from sysinfo instead of runtime. So did a research back to see what APIs they were using under the covers uh, because sys, uh, num CPU just uses uh, runtime num CPU for Linux. So the specialization was only for Windows and uh, for Windows, apparently hot plug, uh, you know, was not supported a while ago and then they added support for hot plug. 
so the number of CPUs changes if uh, one of the CPUs was enabled or disabled or pulled out. Um, so, uh, so it was basically a re uh, replace now uh, because uh, runtime CP in num CPU also supports uh, uh, the same thing that sysinfo was supporting. So th this was like a couple of lines of change. Um, so I also so we filed some of these uh, PRs here, right? But the most important one uh, is in Signode. Uh, there is a enhancement uh, request. Uh, there is a cap, and there is a uh, WIP uh, proof of concept. Uh, so I sent an email out to Signode asking for approvers and reviewers, and that's where we are right now. Uh, once that uh, cap gets approved uh, and the uh, proof of concept uh, they like, if they like the approach, uh, Signode likes the approach, then we'll ha we'll be able to uh, get to a point where we can, uh, you know, we can do a Dockerless uh, tag, especially with Kind because Kind uses Containerd. So kind we thought was the best, uh, you know, showcase for uh, the new tag. So uh, that's what we are shooting towards. It's worth noting that until we actually drop Docker shim, uh, we will still carry the cost of the Docker Docker dependency in our dependency tree. Um, so I think it's worth pushing on the deprecation removal timeline, especially because that's likely to be long. <laughs> even, even if we just reached agreement on a timeline um, to start that process, I think that would be worthwhile. Right, uh, so I, we, I did a bunch of things around that, uh, but I'm not ready to uh, uh, suggest deprecation yet. Uh, so, uh, for example, I want to be sure that we are testing uh, Containerd properly uh, in in our CI system, and we uh, we didn't have any uh, CI jobs that uses Containerd on the master node. We were just using Containerd in the worker node, but not in the master node. So I added uh, a CI job uh, which runs uh, Ubuntu. Containerd in master uh, as well, and that's a release informing now. Um, Kind doesn't use Containerd on the master node. Uh, I wanted a realistic scenario, right? Kind, I don't, uh, okay. I, I don't treat it as a realistic scenario because we need multiple, uh, you know, we need one master with multiple workers. That that's what I would uh, consider a real scenario. Uh, not and not kind. Okay. Uh, I, so I started with cluster, uh, you know, the cube up script, which can deploy Ubuntu um, and either Docker or Containerd. So two variations. That was some of the things that we did last time. So uh, that got done. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to do this. I think we do have some with Kubeadium uh, with master on Ubuntu. Uh, but then, it, you know, the number of jobs that we have Anyway, let's not go down, go down that path yet. So at some point we have to get rid of Q cluster. So that's that's a whole another uh, thing that we need to um, chase. But then now the main question that I have uh, before we can suggest something is: um, Do do we consider container D to be a replacement for what we are doing, or uh, do we have to come up with the, these are the other alternative implementations? Um, that we need to have jobs for before uh, deprecating uh, Docker shim. I mean, I think it's less container D and more just proof that all the CI scenarios are exercised through the CRI, a CRI integration. Container D happens to be the one that we're leaning on in CI, but. Um, the blocker before was that pretty much all of our CI stuff was using Docker shim alone. And right. so demonstrating CRI integrations. I mean, if some if someone wants to volunteer to set up other backing <laughs> CRI implementations, I don't think that we would be upset, but I don't think we need to prove out N 
integrations. Okay. Um, okay. That, yeah, that makes sense to me. Um, then the next, okay, I need to think a little bit more down this path. Um, so uh, uh, at least for 119, the objective would be to get this Dockerless thing in and make sure that kind uses it. And the container D based, uh, the, the ones that you were referring to, uh, bas basically any cluster that is running CI uh, against a CRI container D combo, I would like to see start using this tag. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, um, so we would need to make sure. Okay. I, I, I think I got it. So any CI job that currently uses CRI container D only and not Docker Shen, we should be able to turn on the switch there. Okay. That makes sense for me. Okay. That would also let distributors that are basing their builds on, or, or that aren't using the Docker Shim to have confidence that if they build with this tag, then they're using a tested configuration. Right. So uh, there's a class of jobs that do that, uh, especially in the cluster API, because cluster API depends on just container D and not Docker. Uh, well, the way we, we do the image builder, we chose uh, container D as the CRI implementation and we skip Docker entirely. So yes. based on that, uh, any cluster API job will end up having just uh, uh, container D and not Docker. So uh, I'll, I'll have to dig into those jobs to make sure that uh, we are able to throw in the tag there for sure. All right, is that it for the Docker discussion? Yeah, that's about it. Uh, we could go off on a tangent about uh, cluster, <laughs> how to remove cluster, but I don't want to do that now. Um, maybe add it to uh, cluster lifecycles agenda, I don't know. Like, is that, yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> You're talking about like the cluster directory? Yes, cluster directory with the cube up script. Yeah, that's not our responsibility. Uh, well, yes and no. <laughs> it's a responsibility as a whole. <laughs> when you say our, do you mean code organization? Because I would agree. <laughs> oh, right. So oh, it's, one... it's halfway between cluster lifecycle and testing. Right, right. Testing is the main reason it still exists. So. Right, right. So oh, one question, Andrew, for you was uh, the IPVS uh, in SIG networking um, is any, I don't know if we have any CA jobs that run IPVS and if anybody has jobs that run IPVS only. Um, the job is me spinning up a kind cluster at the end of every release and running all the ED tests against uh, the cluster running IPVS. So no, we don't. As far as I know, there are no CI jobs that configure a cluster to use IPVS and, and run tests against that. Um, but we really should get that get that running. Uh, so, so I know that we have like a kind job that does IPv6, right? So similar to that, can we do a kind job with uh, IPVS? Because I think what you're looking at is uh, an Ubuntu image with IPVS pre-installed, right? Or do you need more than that? Um, yeah, I think that's all, all we need. Um, the require, yeah, like once you, if you have the IPVS modules installed, like you're good to go. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure like the kind already has it installed too. So like we could, um, we could very well have a kind job that tests IPVS and just make it optional on pre um, Right. I mean, it's not, uh, we should, we should not get into this habit of, we should get out of this habit of, you know, you uh, using you to do yeah. heroic stuff. 
it's it's uh it's auto tested. We've got a guy named Otto who tests it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, I definitely agree though. But like, what sucks is that like there are some very very like um small differences between IP tables and IPVS that might break some of the EU tests. Um, I've seen a few before. So I, I don't know, like we, we'd have to evaluate that, but that's, that's, we don't have to talk about that here, but related to this PR that updates to um, uh, the new repo that, that, that uh, you're pushing for DIMS, um, I have it on my radar and um, some folks are doing some testing to validate that it's working as expected. But yeah, I guess this, this is where the EDU test would be helpful, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we really want at least a periodic one so that we know within a day or two if a change that breaks IPVS lands. It doesn't necessarily yeah. have to be pre-submit. I don't know how long it takes or how complex it is to set up, but we should have periodic tests at the very least for every feature we say we support. <laughs> Although, yeah, I mean, absolutely. we ran into something with similar with uh, SE Linux. I was just going to uh, say that, yeah. Where like we shipped multiple releases that didn't enable SE Linux building that's that's just embarrassing. Yeah, um, nobody knew <laughs> that we had broken stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty yeah, bad. For sure. Yeah, I will. Uh, I'll create an issue for it, and I will try to get it on high priority for one nineteen. Uh, so you will do this part of SIG network, right? Yes, I'll do it as part of yeah, as part of SIG network. Okay, and maybe we can pull in like set uh, for. Uh, somebody, Jay, yeah. to help with this, right? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. All right. Uh, last item, Jordan. Uh, C advisor slicing, isolating storage slash CR integrations in progress. Uh, I think I brought this up last release. Um, this is more just an FYI. Uh, we're trying to get to this early in the 119 release so that we can unblock pulling in latest C advisor stuff. So right. this is an example of more upstream work. Uh, a, lo a lot of the things we do end up having to go do fair amounts of upstream work to get things in the right shape before we can make a small change in cube and get big benefits from it. So don't look too closely. It's work in progress. <laughs> okay. Just curious. <laughs> all right, cool. Okay. Uh, that's all I had. Yep, that's it for the agenda too. Um, anything else folks want to uh, discuss? Otherwise, we'll end 30 minutes early. All right then. Uh, see you all in two weeks. Yeah. Stay healthy. Yeah. Stay, stay safe. Stay safe. Bye.